Welcome to what's new in Reaper 6.52. This is a smaller update, but there's still various things that are interesting and useful and worth taking a look at. Let's go. So up first, we have some changes to the Media Explorer. Add option and toolbar button to display detected pitch while previewing files. Add actions and options to adjust pitch by plus or minus one cent. Support toolbar menu feedback for actions to set pitch to X semitones. Add preference to preview RPP files and preference to suppress auto render of proxy files when previewing RPP files. When renaming a RPP file, also rename matching RPP prox file. So now there's an option to display the pitch as files are playing. So that's going to be down in this corner. We can enable this options from the show menu. And so show pitch detection. There's also a default toolbar uh, button here as well. All right, so let's take the chord sample here. And we can see in the corner here, we've got C and E showing. And so it gives you kind of a rough estimate of, of what the pitch is. So I'll just turn that off. That hides that from the toolbar button. Pretty simple, but useful. Now for pitch manipulation, there's the actions to adjust in sense. So let's open up the action list for the Media Explorer. Just make sure that it says Media Explorer in the top right. If we search for cent, we'll have adjust pitch by plus one cent and minus one cent. There's also actions to set the pitch to an exact semitone amount. So if we just search for pitch, we have the adjust by sense that I showed earlier, and then set pitch to plus one up to plus 12, and then down to minus 12. These actions report their state, which means that toolbars and menus will also show that state. If I play this and set this to minus six, we see that here, minus six is is set the toolbar button is lit i can adjust this to minus 12 and this other button lit up so the knob and the menu and the action list and the toolbar buttons are all synced so it shows the correct pitch in each of those and you do need to modify your default toolbar here by just right-clicking Customize. And so you can see the changes that I've made. The default doesn't have those pitch buttons, and I've added them in by just going to Add, and then Pitch, let's say, plus one, Select, and then I renamed it by going to the text icon, plus one. I can rearrange this, put that right above the Reset Pitch, close that. And now I've got my plus one button, and that works. So in addition to being able to preview media files, we can also preview projects. This may be a little weird the first time you do it. Select a project and then press play. And we get a preview of that song or project, but the first time you do it, it's going to open the project, create a sub project, create that proxy file, come back to your original project. Your view may have changed, and in my case, the Media Explorer closed. It started playing, but I couldn't find it. Maybe that's just the way that I have my system set up, but it was a little weird. And so, as I said, it makes a proxy file sub-project so that we, we can preview this. We can disable that preview function here, just uncheck Preview Reaper RPP Projects. And also, you may want to check Do Not auto render dot rpp proxy uncheck the top one and check the bottom one it's a little odd but that's how that works they also changed how renaming files and proxy files uh, works so if we go to rename and let's call this just add in a, a zero one here and so that's also automatically updated the proxy file so it's not orphaned and it should still work. I should still be able to preview it. Right, now let's go to another 
project. Let's take thorn test. I'm going to press play on this and let's zoom out so you can see everything. So the first time it's going to render that project. And so if you have a gap at the start, it's going to start with silence. It's brought me back to my original project and now it's playing that. But overall, I think that works pretty well. Now we're going to move on to the MIDI editor. Add action and menu items to load, unload, rescale files. I have a rescale file downloaded. Uh, I'm not sure where it came from, but it was in my folder. It may have come through Repack or something. Maybe it's stock, but I, I don't know for sure. But I'll show you the process of adding that to Reaper. So we enable the key snap function. And then where it says major, we're going to click on that. Here we have a few different chords and scale options. And then we have the option to load a rescale file. And in here, I'm going to IX scales and open. And now in here, let's zoom out. There's this huge list of scales from three note scales and four note scales to all the classic you know, blues scales, mixolydian, locrian, all that stuff. So that's a huge help when you're using the key snap function. When you're in the notation view and you're using the key snap function and you're using the identify chords function, that will also use your custom uh, scale or the rescale file to identify the chords. And if we want to unload that, it's just at the bottom of the list, unload rescale file, and it shows which one is loaded. And that brings us back to our default menu. So to see if you have any rescale files available, you go to options and then show Reaper resource path and explore slash finder. Then it will be under the data folder and then IX scales. I've got this one ZD complete dot rescale. I wish I knew where it came from. Actually, the original modification date is 2012. So, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I see there's also a sample rescale file from the Reaper data folder as well. If I can figure out where I found that file, I will link to it in the description and in the blog post, or I'll have some other information about this. Up next, we're going to talk about peak building. So this is just an optimization that they've done. Display remaining file statistics rather than remaining items. Improve behavior when reordering tracks and items. Improve multiprocessor use for or more cores when available and optimize spectral peaks spectrum calculation. This is all just optimization, things that we don't really have any options for. It's just doing it for us in the background. But this has a big impact on loading projects for the first time, importing items. It builds the peaks much faster, wastes less time between items. Plus, it's able to use multiprocessing. So rather than one file at a time, it's it's going through that much faster. Up next, project settings. Add drop down menu to support setting, resetting, project start offset, and project start measure. All right, so I've got this item here at bar 11. You can see that in the time counter here. And if we go up to the file menu and then project settings, under project settings, we have two options here instead of one for setting the project start time and starting project measure. Each of these now have options for setting the start time. So I can set this to zero. So where my cursor is at bar 11, I can set that to zero. Instead of 20 seconds, 20 seconds now becomes a zero. And then over here, the original start time will now be minus 20 seconds. So I can set that. And project start measure, we can make bar 11 now bar number one. Yeah, so we can set this to the current edit position or reset 11 bars into the project is now bar one. So we got 11 bars of pre-roll if we want to consider it that way. Uh, and also the time clock starts at this position. And then we've got negative time over on the left. It's not something you need to do often, but it's useful to have those all as separate options and then being able to reset those easily. So by going here, change start time, we'll reset. And also project start measure, we can reset that as well. 
Up next, we have some changes to the stock plugins. For Reefer, add automatable parameter to adjust gain of EQ threshold noise profile curve. And for the rest of the replugs, longer, more descriptive parameter names. About a month ago, I did a comparison of Reefer in compressor mode to Smooth Operator from Baby Audio. Uh, smooth Operator just seems a little bit easier to use in a lot of situations for me. It's a little bit faster to set up, but they both can sound good. And one of the kind of complaints that I had was that it was difficult to move all of the points and kind of scale the amount of the effect easily. You have to hold down the command key or the control key on Windows. And I find that to be kind of awkward because it's a hidden parameter. You have to just pay attention to this tiny text at the bottom of the window. And really what I was hoping for was just another slider like this to adjust that. But they've kind of made that change, but again, not a visible change. It's still kind of a hidden parameter. So we can go to click the UI button and we have this option for EQ curve offset. And so this goes to plus six and minus 100. And this is essentially scaling back. Uh, you can see there's two red lines here. Hopefully you can see that. One is the EQ curve and then one is the scaled amount of that EQ curve. Useful but not exactly what I was hoping for. You know, just another slider here. I think there's enough room for that um, or down at the bottom, just a way to scale back the settings that are mostly right. But the good thing is like, if you get your noise reduction right for the entire project, and except for like a couple words that kind of get lost, you can automate this parameter, the EQ curve offset, make it less sensitive or more sensitive just for those points where it's not quite working. If 90% of your project is working, you can uh, adjust that without having to go back and listen to your entire project again, which is a big deal on a podcast or an audiobook or something like that. It takes a lot of time to recheck all of those things when you make a processing change like that. So this is a good change, but it's not a great change yet. Uh, I feel like my comments on that in the video influence what happened in this changelog. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it's pretty cool that they're watching and listening. They've also improved the names of the parameters, made them longer and more descriptive. This doesn't have a huge impact on most people because they're not usually looking in this UI view, but also this does affect what the parameter names are when you're automating. So as you can see here, most of the parameter names were abbreviated before um, or just a single word and compared to how it is now in 6.52, there is quite a lot more information about those things. And now we have some changes to rendering. Action to redisplay statistics from most recent render in web browser. Add option to display or not display RMS in render statistics. Option to automatically return to render setup window when render is finished. Gray out add metadata button when embed metadata is unchecked. Greatly improve render speed when rendering many regions at once. All right, so let's start with one of the preferences for rendering. We've got calculate statistics when rendering. And in here we have the option for RMS enabled or disabled. A while ago, they added the option to open the render statistics in a web browser. I do have to render this project at least once. And while this is happening here, when finished, we have the option to close the render window or return to the render setup, which brings back this window. The back button will also go to this window and close will just close all render window stuff. We have this option here, stats, open render statistic in web browser. Right, so open render statistics in web browser, I'll do that. And this is what that looks like. If I close this and close the render window, how do we get back to that text file? Render statistics, file display statistics from most recent render in web browser. Let's run that and that window will pop up again. So if you have that option to close the render window automatically, and then you decide that you want to see that uh, render statistics window, you can now do that. For the metadata, uh, this is something that I noticed in the batch converter first. They've made it so that the metadata button here gets grayed out when you uncheck embedding metadata, which makes sense. You're probably not going to make a bunch of changes to your metadata settings and then not render with metadata. In the previous update video, they had a bunch of changes to the batch file converter. And one of the things that I noticed was that the add new metadata 
toggle here also disables this button. I think I mentioned that that is smart, but the render window at that time wasn't the same way. So now they've fixed that. You're welcome. I feel like that is something that I pointed out and makes perfect sense for the devs to do. One more thing related to rendering is a wildcard. Support dollar sign channels, wildcard in render, batch converter, and bounce. This channels function here, stereo, mono, four, six, eight, you can type in any amount you want. That works with wildcards now. So we can do project name and then dash dollar sign channels. And so this is a stereo and it's got two channels. Let's change this to eight or six. And uh, let's change that. Let's change this to a 56 channel wave. And that puts in that number there. And this probably doesn't make a difference for single file renders, but if we're doing um, batch rendering multiple files and maybe they have different channel counts, um, especially with items and item processing and surround sound processing, all these things matter. If we can batch that in any way, if, if we can improve rendered file names using wildcards, this is a great uh, addition. So yeah, that's it. This is a pretty small update, but actually lots of interesting and useful features added here. I think the best feature is all the little improvements to peak building, making that faster. That's fantastic. And the pitch functions in the uh, Media Explorer are really cool as well. So if you missed any of the previous videos in this series, we go all the way back to Reaper 5.0 update. So many things to learn in those videos. It's like days long to watch that entire playlist now. I think it's worth doing. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.